All right, predicting your return for your bond funds is actually quite simple. I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's probably the easiest, when it comes to your investments, predicting the return on your bond funds is probably the easiest thing you can do. All right, so let's jump into this. We're gonna look at uh, uh, Vanguard's Long-Term Treasury Fund, VUSTX. VUSTX is the Vanguard Long-Term Treasury. We're gonna to go to, uh, what is this, uh, uh, ytdreturn.com, ytdreturn.com. And I, I tell you, man, I love this uh, website. One of y'all has sent this to me, I love it. So V-U-T-S, did I say VUTX, is that right? VUTX, is that it? Um, no, not found. So what was that actually, hold on a sec. We're gonna to go to uh, V-U-S-T-X, V-U-S-T-X. So it's V-U-S-T-X, VUSTX, V-U-S-T-X. Yeah, this is ytdreturn.com. I love it, man. So we're going to look back. Um, what's the long-term bond fund? Let's look. Uh, let's see. How long does this guy go back to 1995? Man, it's not the one we want to look at. Hold on a sec. Let me find uh, Let's go to an, an intermediate term. Hold on a sec. So here we're going to use the intermediate term. It's, it's a, little bit, a little bit easier to, to, to show you. V-F-I-T-X. V-F-I-T-X. So we're going to go to V-F-I-T-X on ytdreturn.com. All right, so we're going to say, all right, intermediate term bond, let's go back uh, 10 years to 2001, not 2011, excuse me, 2011. So we're going to do it January 1st, 2011. All right, and then we'll go to December 31st, 2020. That'll give us 10 years. All right, December 31st, 2020. Boink. And then we're going to hit this guy. We're going to get a pop up window. And VFITX without dividends reinvested because you're not you can't invest your you don't even get dividends you get interest but you can't reinvest interest into bonds so we got 2.35 percent rate of return on that fund now if you're wondering what that fund is well uh, let's just take a gander shall we so look at uh, look at I tell you what let's look at Schwab VFITX VFITX I actually like the Schwab VFITX Let's take a gander. We're going to gander along, shall we? All right, this is easy. Um, uh, so let's take a look at what this fund is. Uh, been around since 1991. Um, it's not leveraged, thank the good Lord. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying. Government bonds right there. So we got uh, 89 point, basically 90% government bonds and 10% sec uh, securitized. I'm not sure if that's mortgage bad. I don't know what that is. But anyway. Expense ratio of 20 basis points. And let's take a look at the holdings here. Um, yeah, there, yeah, man, there you go. Fannie Mae is the largest holding, 4.23. There you go. And then you got a bunch of treasury notes. Uh, 182 bonds, nothing short. Um, thank Again, thankfully. And how much cash they keep? Does it say on here how much cash they got? I mean, they have some cash. I know that. Anyway, I don't know. But they're, uh, let's see, they're, Bonds are uh, right. Where is the bonds here? But their uh, maturity levels are. Um, hold on just a second. So they're paying 1.06 today. Interesting. We're gonna hold that. Hold that in just a second. There we go. Let's go to portfolio. All right. Let's see what we got here. All right. Okay. Here we go. So 100 percent. 100 percent bonds. But they should tell us the maturities. I think all long bonds. Triple A rated government bonds. Yep. All right, right there. Uh, between three and five and five. Yeah, basically three to ten years. All right. All the bonds are three to ten with a couple longer bonds. All right. So over the last ten years, this guy has done. Uh, what do we say? Uh, oops. I got to do that again. Oh man. I guess I got to do it again. It's done two point three five um, is your return. All right. Now we're gonna go to the Treasury. This guy right here, the Treasury Yield Curve. I love this site too. Treasury.gov. Just type in treasury or treasury bond yield curves. We're going to go to 2011 and we'll go to January 1st and see what the 10-year treasury is doing back then. Oh, look at that. 3.36 on the 10-year treasury. And the Vanguard bond fund did, what do we do again? 3.36, about 2.35. Now, the reason for that, if we go, let's look at this, the seven-year treasury, 2.74 and they even have some five years. So, I mean, you're going to take a conglomeration of those three things right there. Uh, 3.36, 3. 2 points. So let's just say they had, if we go back, we're going to go 3.36 plus 2.74 plus uh, 2.02. We're going to divide that by 3. 2.7, right? 
2.7 and we're going to look at their holdings and they have uh 38 percent three to five years 31 percent uh five to seven and 19 percent seven to ten so there you go man so i mean basically that's exactly spot on what their current what their yields were at that point is the exact rate of return uh you got on your money uh just well not exact but pretty doggone close i mean i hope that makes sense you're not gonna get more you're not gonna get less you're gonna get that exact yield i mean it could be off by a little bit so 2.7 I guess you could say this could reinvest simply because the um, it's buying other bonds. So if you're going to buy a bond mutual fund, it's not going to be as precise what I'm showing you here, but yeah, pretty close. Cool. So you got 2.6 on if you did reinvest your interest, but it's going to be an interest in different paying bonds, not the same bond. But anyway, you can see it. 2.6, I got 2.7. I mean, it's literally that simple. All right. So let's go back to Schwab. And we said um, this guy is paying us right now what uh, – the yield right now is 30 day SEC yield. All right, 30 day SEC yield 0.55. Interesting, huh? So let's go to uh, 30 day SEC yield, and they're averaging five to, well, let's, let's, I mean, we can see what it's got. 30 day SEC yield, we'll go to 2021, and between the averages of three, five, and seven, uh, three, five, uh, five, seven, and 10, we're going to get probably that same thing. Here's a 10 right here um well, let's see right down there's a 10 okay so we got 1.2 is that 10 yeah we got 1.2 0.85 and 0.5 so pretty close right there man you're getting almost identical to what the current yield is which is 0.55 if we could find that again right there that's the 30-day sec yield um so let's look at what the returns were i don't know we can go back uh I tell you what, let's look at what the returns were going back to 2000 to 2009, because that'd be 10 years. 2000, 2009. Let's see what this guy did. This guy did, uh, I guess we're going to look at reinvesting in interest. So 6.78. So let's look at the 10 year in 2000, 6.78. Uh, the 10 year in 2000 is blink. All right. Uh, looks kind of. Uh, 6.5 to 6.6 to 6.5. Um, so, so <laughs> if we go to not reinvesting, it's, uh, what was it? Five, oh we should stay up there for me. If 5.6. So basically between 5.6 and 6.78, and that's essentially what you're getting on your, on your interest at that point or the yield, um, at it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not how, how ridiculously close these things are. It's crazy. All right, so this goes back all the way to uh, that bond, that fund itself. What's the inception on this fund? Um, I can't remember where it shows it actually, but this will go back to 1995. So what we can do is say, what did this do from 1995? All right, we'll see what the the five, seven, and ten year were. 19, so 7.8, 7.8. Okay, so basically 7.8 was the ten year, the five, the seven, and the ten year Treasury. We'll go here, 1995 to 2004, and see what happened there. Blink. So 7.8, 7.8, 7.8, basically. Let's see what these guys, oh, no data. Oh, man, why? Oh, 1995, excuse me. There we go. Let's see what we got. Hey, look at that, 7.8, man, it's crazy. <laughs> It's just that simple. When it comes to your bonds, it's literally just a matter of what the yield is you're getting at this time. There's just no other way around that. So I'm telling you right now, people are like, but I got 25,000% last year. doesn't matter, man. I'm telling you, it's always going to revert back to, let's see what, can we give us a year by year on this guy? Let's go to performance. It's always going to revert back. I, I cannot stress this enough, man. It's always going to revert back. Uh, so uh, do they give us a year by year? What do I got going to Yahoo? Oh, sweet. Yeah, Schwab, man. Kicking butt, taking names. So, look, you can see there's some variation between performance based on what people are willing to pay for the share price, if that makes sense. So, in 2020, it was up 8.21%. 2019, is up 6%. In 2018, it was up only 1%. So, this, these two things right here, 14% the last two years, you're going to give those away. It's just that you're not going to get that, man. I mean, I just, I'm telling you right now because the share price is much above par. And I don't know what this was initially issued at. Right now it's trading at 11. 
yeah, there you go. So these these funds are. I bet if we can we look at what this fund did the very beginning when it when it came out. I bet I bet, I know it's issued at ten ten bucks a share. So now it's trading at what's that eleven eleven uh, percent above par, which means it's going to go back, um, and you're you're gonna re, you're gonna lose some of these returns here. That's just all there is to it because it's trading eleven sixty one par value is ten. It won't be quite as precise as that, but it's going to be pretty precise, man. I mean, because the, the bonds here issue at 10, issue at 100, issue at 1,000, at maturity, it matures at 10, 100, 1,000, depending on what the par value issue is. So you will start to see some negative returns on bonds uh, going forward. It has nothing to do with the, the uh, I mean, it will be, what's going to happen is the price will drop, all right? And the reason the price drops isn't because people are, oh my goodness, their interest rates are going up. The price is dropping. Um, I mean, the interest rates will go up because the price is dropping. That's how it works. And so people say, okay, as this bond gets closer and closer to maturity, it's going to get closer and closer to its par value. The price is going to go down. That's all there is to it. So if you're holding that bond as it gets closer and closer to its par value, inherently you're losing some net asset value, price per share. Now you might say, "Well, I'm getting a higher yield." Well, not really, because you're going to sack. It's it's just this equilibrium, man. It's a seesaw. If you're getting a higher price, you're going to get a lower a lower yield. If you get a lower price, you're going to get a higher yield. And at some point, that always levels off right there. And it's it's just as as pure as the sun rises in the east, man. So just be careful. That's how you can predict return on your bonds, and it's not going to be good for the next couple of years. I can see that in my way. I hope you can too. I will right, we'll see you.